Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, we are going to have some inky fun to begin with and then we are going to create two different types of window cards-ish, I guess uh, I would say. Now, I am going to start off with some re-inkers today, but you can absolutely go ahead and just use normal ink pads and smush them down onto this waffle flower stencil mat. Now, this is a non-stick mat. You can do this on pretty much any uh, non-porous surface. If you just have a mat, if you have a piece of plastic, um, you'll be able to smush your or inks you could use an acrylic block you could use watercolors to put down on this you can use any water re uh, reactive inks obviously I am choosing to use the Simon Hurley uh, re-inkers today I am using it on some Tim Holtz watercolor paper and we are going to quickly go through and make some backgrounds now this is midnight snack and some later gator then I'm going to do at least two um, two backgrounds of each kind of color. So I mop up that really, really big puddle there and then I come in and get a little bit more. I decide to add a little bit more here and there with little dots, but that is pretty good. Now these backgrounds do not need to be even remotely perfect. In fact, my aim is to have some color or of both of the colors and then some white space on each one as well. I definitely don't want it to be completely and utterly colored. I want to be able to sort of mainly see both the colors that I pop on. This one here is Prom Queen and Traffic Cone. Now this is actually a pink and a red together, which I thought would be uh, interesting. We'll see how it goes. And then we're going to turn these into some cards. Obviously today I want to use a couple of different um, I guess they're sort of window techniques, I guess, but just things you can also do with these backgrounds that we create because boy, this is fun. You can keep going and going and going and for a really long time creating backgrounds, but it's fun to be able to turn them into things. So you may already have backgrounds that are ready to go. You absolutely don't have to go ahead and create them. But this is a very fun little experiment. It's a good to see how the dye, the inks react um, in all sorts of ways. It's nice to see how they react together. If you add more water, less water, if you, uh, the re ink is obviously quite concentrated ink and so there's big splotches how they turn out. This is what we got out of that little uh, session. And I only made these six pages, which I was very proud of myself for because boy, this is like one of those addictive things. When you start, you can just keep creating and creating. So I have these sort of pinks and oranges and then these blues and greens that I'm going to use today. Now this is the uh, Vicky Booten, I think this is called Documented. This is a stamp set is still available, although I have had it for some time now. And this just feels like a really eclectic mix of stamps to me. But I think these are going to be really good for a for a bit of a guise, for a bit more masculine. Um, sometimes I think I get a lot of messages around people struggling with if I don't do birds or flowers, what do I do? Or if I don't do flowers or love hearts or butterflies, what do I do? So this is kind of my answer. Now I have a white embossing powder and I have a gold embossing powder. I choose to get these super fine in my embossing powders. I find that that helps me with a really crisp, clear image. And then I'm going to use some Versamark embossing powder. Now one of the reasons that I like to do two of each background is to give myself options and I'm going to do one covering it in the white embossing powder and I'm going to do one covering it in the gold embossing powder. If you do not have two sheets of sort of the same colors then simply cut it in half. <laughs> so you're going to uh, have slightly less options but still good ones. Now this is the fun part and I kind of call this the risky part because unless you really tilt your paper, you can't really see where you're stamping the new embossing <laughs> stamps. So I am going to take out of this stamp set, this is the mini postmarks from Woodwear, and I believe I ordered this when I got on a big uh, making my own stamps, making my own postmark, post stamps, um, 
and then I made them big uh, sort of features, focal points of cards. It's a fair few videos ago now, maybe a dozen or so videos ago. I got on a big kick and then if anybody in the crafting world, can you relate when you see something you like, you think that'll be great for a project I'm working on or I saw somebody working on this project and now I order it and then when it comes you're like, oh, and now I'm past that phase or um, now I can't remember what I, what I ordered that for. So um, I need to make good use of these gorgeous little mini postmark stamps. Even though I got past that phase uh, of the other stamps that I was creating, the other uh, little uh, post stamps that I was creating. So we have just sort of blindly stamped all over this with a mixture of stamps. And I think that's why this little stamp set, which is a great, uh, it's got a pretty low price point. I think it's around six or so US dollars. I ordered mine through scrapbook.com and they always, almost always have free gifts that you can add into your order. And I like it because the gifts aren't just random things that you can't use. They're often dyes, stamp sets, they are um, paste, they are liquids, they are something really fun that you can experiment with. So now that I have done the embossing, so that's where I did one whole page in the white and then one whole page in the gold, now I'm going to cut down these into little squares. And it doesn't really matter what size your squares are as long as they are all even, in my opinion. But, I mean, hey, you could do them not even as well. I am cutting them down into about one and a half inch squares. And then I'm just going to do the same with the gold. I truly am picking out the parts that I want. Um, and so they have sort of a mixture of the uh, images on them. So it's sort of not one image centered in the middle, although I think that would look really nice too. There are so many different ways that you can go about doing this and I could make endless, endless videos on the different options. So I just thought I would do a few today. Now I am going to pop this onto a ever so slightly bigger square of plain white cardstock. This is just going to give it an even border, it's going to give it that little bit more dimension, it's going to give it a little bit more interest than just these plain gorgeous squares, but again this is completely optional. Now I want to pop up my squares, but I want to stamp my sentiment. So I'm actually going to temporarily adhere these. This is the Tombow removable adhesive, and it's the perfect amount so that I can just get everything in place where I need it to go, just roughly, pretty much, and then I'm able to stamp my sentiment, and then I will come back and pop these up, because um, I was worried that if I added the dimension with the foam tape or the foam squares or whatever we're going to use first, then I wouldn't be able to get my acrylic block or my stamping platform or whichever one, I wouldn't be able to, um, you know, get it down far enough and it might not stamp perfectly. So this is a Catherine Paula, I think it's called the Happy Birthday All The Ways or happy birthday many ways or, or something along those lines. As usual, I will link all of these things down below. If you see something and I haven't quite called it the right thing, then it will be linked down below and you can check it out uh, down there. There will be a few different shops linked uh, as many as I can. Now, this is where I put it in my stamping platform because I was a little unsure of how this would go. I did cut the stamp apart so that I could put it side by side rather than stacking it. Stamp it in some Versafine Onyx Black ink, a gorgeous dark uh, crisp stamping ink and then it stamped pretty good. I was pretty happy with that so that is all good. I can move on to popping these up now. Now I have had some, I do like my foam tape. I have my favorite foam tape that I always use but I definitely have these dots which have been sitting in my little stash. I have been shifting them around forever and I'm like, we need to use them. We need to use them and make the most of what I've got before I go ahead and order some more foam um, tape. So dots it is today and then I can also use the background of these as well. So we can use all the foam that is on here, not just the actual dots that we pop out because the background is even better in my opinion uh, for popping things up. And so I'm going to pop these on and they're all nicely lined up and this card is shiny, it's got dimension, it's still really uh, masculine and I'd be happy giving this to any guy. Uh, it's got no real particular theme so I was pretty happy with this. I think this is just a really easy card to put together. As I said you could actually have the images as a focal point or you can just keep them as I have and just kept it pretty random all over. 
I will just quickly say I'm so sorry I've had the flu for the last uh, almost two weeks and it just will not go away I've had a really good dose of it so I know my voice is still recovering but um, after two weeks I really needed to do some voiceovers and catch up on a bit of work so um, it just has to be at this point now we are going to move on to these gorgeous pink ones and this one goes completely not how I thought it would so this stamp here is the Woodwear Dogwood Flowers. Gorgeous stamp. I've had this one sitting in my stash. I ordered it and I absolutely love it and I need to find ways to use it. So today was the day. I started by stamping on one of them and then I changed. I was going to do a different layout but sort of similar theory as the first one. And it didn't. No, I just changed it. <laughs> it was about this point when I was like, oh, or I could do this and so um, yeah different different direction that we're going to go in so I mainly stamped the big dogwood flowers stamp and I did stamp a um, a couple of other at the dragonfly a couple of little bits and pieces because at this point I just wasn't sure what I was doing but as I said kept the flowers pretty much by themselves and didn't overlap any of those stamps I still did do one in gold and I still did the other in the white uh, but I end up using just one of them. So let me know in the comment section down below Do you try and stick to exactly what you're doing or do you just let yourself go where the wind takes you and go off in any direction? Um, as long as it sort of keeps you happy <laughs> So for me, I, I pretty much go in any direction although in saying that sometimes I have to stop myself and focus <laughs> On what I was originally intending to do Sometimes that's because I turn them into videos and I'm trying to show something in particular and so I have to sort of keep on track um, but anyhow so this one moved into this is the master layouts 9 from Gina K and at this point I was like I want to use this as a window I wanted to use this uh, a few times and so I think today is the day this window die is actually going to be a window at this point I'm deciding whether I want to have sort of partial images or just the gorgeous flower image and I think that's what I'm going to go with. So for me I'm going to take a, I need to make this into an actual, so this sort of, this window one here cuts out just the windows. Um, so if you want to make it a frame you need to add one more. I am taking a stitched die from the Master Layouts 2 um, and I'm going to yeah make it so it cuts out the actual frame um, but any even if you wanted to you could probably just trim it with a trimmer um, but because I was going to do several of these and layer these up I wanted to do it with the die so that they would be exactly the same if I did it with a trimmer there was a risk that my cutting would not be uh, quite lining up so I'm going to run this through I think I did it three times the little squares that it leaves from the windows these intrigue me I feel like I could absolutely use these for something so let me know if you have ideas uh, in the comment section down below what I should be using those little squares for I feel like they're going to be something I just haven't quite figured out what um, I definitely have saved them um, so I did put double-sided tape on one of these windows and then I'm going to liquid glue them together because at this point I decided I actually wanted to make a window card and I was going to include acetate this was absolutely not my original plan at all but a little bit of fun now I don't love love a big bulky shaker so this card here is actually only going to have one layer of cardstock underneath it um, and that is just going to leave us enough room for just some very tiny little bits of shaker so I have got a piece of Hero Arts acetate that is how I measure it I just make those rough cuts and that's where you saw the double-sided tape um, that I have on the top of that window I've already taken off the release paper and I'm just going to lie the acetate down on top of it and then to make all of the edges nice and clean and beautiful I'm going to sandwich that between one more layer of the window which I have sitting there to the right and I will just put down some more double-sided tape because when I'm working with acetate I prefer to use double-sided tape I think it sticks better and I get a much cleaner uh, sort of outcome then I take off the release paper and stick the final window so technically it goes cardstock window layer cardstock window layer acetate layer 
cardstock window layer. So that is the three layers that I have and as I said it keeps everything really nice and neat and everything's going to line up because I cut them all with the dies and as I said there is just a tiny layer, technically there's just one layer of cardstock that is going to lift this up so it's not going to be a bulky card but I do love that shine from the acetate <laughs> that makes the window. So uh, I was loving the way that this was going even though it was not my original intention. I am just going to uh, eyeball this, measure this, and this is how I measure if you know my channel. I just roughly measure and then cut down here and this is going to fit really nicely behind that panel. For the shaker bits, I'm going to use a little bit of an Alina Crafts. This is um, sort of, I don't really know how to explain it, like little shards of iridescent uh, plastic I guess I'm not sure they're beautiful it's gorgeous it's very uh, almost clear see-through with a little bit of white iridescent -y, shiny just beautiful very 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 flat which is what I needed if I still want them to move around if I make something too big in there then it's just going to get stuck in between the paper and the acetate and it's not going to shift that might be what you're after as well you might want to add a few bits of that in but I know that this little um, this little mix here is going to move beautifully and I only put a tiny 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 bit in because I don't want this to be a big shaker card that wasn't the idea I just want it to be a gentle bit of movement in there behind the window now it does make it very hard once I have all my lighting on to be able to shift it and show you the shaker bits moving around whilst not catching the glare of the acetate now this is me being mediumly lazy because I could have got the ink pad out and used an ink blending tool but I had the reinker there from the beginning of the project and so I'm just using a makeup wedge and I popped down some of the reinker to uh, get myself a nice little border in the same matching colour as I have in the card front that we put on. So absolutely, you could just use an ink blender, but actually you don't even need all these specific tools. Um, I have found that cotton buds, cotton balls, they blend beautifully uh, if you need to do some blending. As do makeup sponges, there are lots of different kinds and types out there, so give them a go if you don't have um, any other tools. But I do love the... Um, sponge brushes and the domed foam blenders <laughs> that feels like a mouthful those are all my favorites uh, usually but anyhow this has worked perfectly I'm now going to cut this down I probably should have done this to begin with cut this down so it creates a really nice frame for our gorgeous window to go on I have some double-sided tape there ready to go nice and flat this even though this is a shaker card this is very very flat this reminds me of a couple of other techniques I have done to make flat shakers. They are my favorite. Um, but the pink around the background just helps it stand up because I'm going to put it on a plain white card base as well. Now I do apologize at this point as well for the length of this video. This is much longer than my normal but this video went in two completely different directions and I thought about splitting them up but I really dislike splitting videos and I know that you all are so supportive even when I make longer videos. I so appreciate it. Um, now finishing this one off, let's get through this. I have glued this with some liquid glue down onto the card base. It is beautiful. There's a little bit of shaker. There's some shine from the acetate. It reminds me of an actual window which I really really love that gold is shimmery now we are going to add on a quick sentiment I'm going to use the Catherine Paula uh, the same one that we used in the first one this is the many ways uh, happy birthday many ways and then I'm going to use from the master Lats to that little banner die it has the same stitching that I used to cut out um, around the larger one of the window as well so I'm going to pop this on with some VersaFine onyx black ink and then this is going to go right across the center I couldn't really think of a good place to put this and almost I think you could get away without putting a sentiment and I could have just stamped that big gorgeous happy birthday in the middle so that's another option as well but I'm going to plonk this right in the middle it's the same cardstock and the same white so it is going to all match nicely and I think it looks okay so let me know what you think in the comment section down below are you more keen to create number two or keen to create number one version number one if you do end up recreating these or you were inspired by these, then I would love to see them. I love to see pictures of your creations. So the best way to do that is to come onto my Facebook page. It's called Come Crafting with Natasha. We have an amazing community there. I am so grateful that we have all of these gorgeous card makers and paper crafters that come together. It is a kind and encouraging space. If you would like to come over and join us, you can either just search it on Facebook or there will be a link down below. 
There will also be links down below to the um, products that I have used in today's video. And other than that, I'll see you in the next video.